Hello, Manufacturing World. I'm Wade Anderson with Shop Matters, sponsored by Akuma America. This podcast is created to discuss all things machining and manufacturing. I'm here in our studio in Charlotte, North Carolina today, talking to Casey Crusoe and Brad Klepstein. Casey, give us a little background on you and what you do with the company. Okay. Um, so I've been with the company approximately 20 years, and my title is Principal Engineer for Software and FA Products. FA stands for Factory Automation. That's the Japanese term for the suite of software products that are associated with the control. So a lot of what I do relates to not only customized software for end users, but also for uh, machine connectivity, industrial internet, things like that. All right. Brad, tell us a little bit about your background. How'd you get involved with Okuma? Thanks, Wade. I've been at Okuma about six years, about five and a half, six years now. And my title is Controls Product Specialist, and I'm the supervisor of the Product Specialist Group. So kind of along with Casey, I um, help teach our customers and our end users about the benefits of our products and I help our distributors with the same thing. So how to uh, sell the benefits of our control systems. So I work with Casey probably every week, right? Um, Just trying to develop new features, new functions, new software, communicate that to Japan and then to our customers as well. So a lot on the technology side, which I think we're going to talk about here a little bit today with some things on connectivity. So we're both really involved with that. Uh, I think that's going to be one of the topics that we talk about with connect plan and connected equipment. Um, so we're both very involved with that. And I want to say Casey's kind of a, you know, a guy that does it all, man. He, uh, everything from <laughs> connect plan software to cut, creating custom apps, which I think is another cool topic that we can get into as well. So um, You can't live 20 years at Akuma and not have been around a lot of different departments and done a lot of different things. Oh right? You absorb a lot of things, yes. <laughs> Lots of hats, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so right now in the manufacturing world, there's a lot of talk about smart factory um, or intelligent uh, manufacturing cells, things of that nature. What does that mean to you guys? When you hear somebody talking about connected machines, connectivity, what what does that mean to you? How do you get involved with it? And where do you see that technology growing? Yeah, I'll, I'll start off uh, okay. if you don't mind, Casey. Yeah, so I think this all kind of revolves around uh, the, the, um, the topic of automation, right? So when, when a lot of people think automation, the first thing you usually think of would be a robot or a cobot. Robot loading, loading yeah, machine tools, Exactly, right? but what you don't think of would be the software aspect of that. There is a lot that you can do as... Um, as a business just to automate the systems that you do have or to automate the equipment that you're using. I don't need to purchase a robot in a lot of these scenarios. And that's where I think this connect plan kind of comes into play. It allows our customers and our end users to connect assets that they already own, Mm -hmm. that they didn't know that they could do that, right? So So not just the Kuma machine, not just the OSP control. Anything you got. Right. And uh, in a lot of instances, you can connect that with an interface that might already be there. We'll get into it here in a little bit, but that's called MT Connect. That's what we use. But anyways, it's data that you can collect and uh, do different things with this information. So it's really using data as an asset. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. All right. So Casey, if I've got uh, a machine shop, I've got 15 machines on the floor, how do I go about connecting them? How do I go about getting that information into Connect Plan where I can visually see what's taking place in my shop floor? Well, Brad hit one of those nails right on the head, and MT Connect is probably the easiest connective technology out there, <clears throat> especially with Yokuma, but not exclusively. Uh, it's... On the Okuma side, it's free and it's available on all of the machines shipping from the factory now. So you've got that in your pocket. It's it's really easy to do. We easy because have... you don't need to do anything, right, Casey? That's, it's already there. That's right. It's there. Uh, <laughs> there is a checkbox that you have to check to enable it, and that's and off you go. Uh, beyond that, there's uh, other connective technologies that we can use. We can use uh, Fanic Focus Two very easily. Uh, there's a couple of proprietary protocols we can use, and we can later on we can get into some of the devices that are available too. Uh, but so part of the reality line, in today's world, in, in most machine shops, at least in North America, 
nobody tends to have one brand specific shop floor, right? So even if it's a it's a all Akuma house or all Mazak house, there's still smatterings of other machines here and there, whether it's Always. a Fanuc control or yep. a Mitsubishi control. So you're saying through MT Connect, we can connect and see data from doesn't matter what the platform is. Definitely. Um, and you're right. Every single time that we've made a, a quote for a connect plan, it's involved machines that are not built by Okuma. And we offer some sort of a solution for that when in the quoting process. Uh, to your point there, we have successfully connected uh, uh, bar feeders and uh, coolant units that have MT Connect adapters on them. I think that's a great point. It doesn't even need to be a machine tool, but MT Connect is still that conduit with which you're gathering and pushing out that information to whatever system you want on the back end, right? Whatever dashboard software, uh, and there's a tons of, tons of uh, solutions that are available to you as well. But I, I think Casey's right. MT Connect is that common data source, that common stream that no matter what you have, as long as it's MT Connect compliant, I can pull, I can extract information from that device and pull it into a single source. And I was kind of thinking about that a little bit on the way over here, actually. And I recently have been automating my home, right? So the automatic lights, the garage door, my thermostats, the front door lock. Well, I probably shouldn't say that one. But <laughs> anyways, uh, I wanted a, a platform, a hardware platform where I could connect whatever device I had and I could operate it from one app. So... I purchased all these different products from different vendors, uh, August Smart Locks and, you know, Hue from Philips, the light bulbs. It all goes into this one hub, right, that I bought. It's called a Wink Hub. And that allows me to control all of that stuff automatically through one app. I don't need to go to different apps on my phone to close the garage door, to turn off the lights. I got it all in that one app, which is awesome. But the benefit to me, too, is I can like connect all that stuff and then control it all automatically with robots that I have set up there as well. And that's software robots. So when I leave for work in the morning, I say, lock it down. And that closes the garage door, turns off all the lights, turns off my thermostats. And then when I'm on my way home, I do the opposite. Hey, I'm coming home. Turn the lights back on. Get my air conditioner oh, back down to 69. Exactly. You got it. Ooh, that's freezing. My fiance would not like that at all. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's um, it's easy to do. And the benefit that I see to that is that I click one button and all of that stuff happens. The cost savings, which is like the next part of that, is also pretty beneficial because I get that report from Duke Energy like every month. And it bases your wattage, your energy usage off of similar households in the area. And I'm always way down there at the bottom as far as wattage, the usage. So they say you're one of the most energy efficient homes in your area. And I'm like, that's pretty sweet. You know, you finally see the benefit of all this stuff that you're doing. Yeah, it was easy to do and awesome to operate but now from you wherever. See the return on the revenue that exactly. you Exactly. You finally yeah, see that the ROI there. So I think that's, you know, kind of stopping people from doing this because they don't know what that is. So if you're going to spend the money to implement some kind of system, they're afraid that they won't be able to see the ROI. Mm -hmm. But it's it's there, trust me, but you don't need to implement an entire uh, version of something to see benefits. You can take it pieces at a time. So I guess getting back to what Casey was saying about MT Connect, it's already there on some of the products that we've already got. If you don't have it on a new machine, you can download it as a free app. Yeah, you can get the MT Connect application on the App Store. And to your point about you know removing that barrier to entry, the uh, the cost uh, not only is MT Connect free, but there's also an application on the App Store that'll allow you to aggregate and view that data uh, for a 24 hour period. So you know that's it's the uh, that's right, that's right. So you can get them fully connected. Yep. For essentially nothing, so that they can at least see that data, right? That's so correct. That's your, yep. your crawl, walk, run. So you can get exactly. the MT Connect, get it loaded up, take an app from the App Store, download it, and then see it to a certain extent for 24 hours period of time, 
and then start extrapolating what information is actually important to you. What's going to make a difference in how you're managing your shop. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Do you know what a, that app is, Casey? What that I is believe called? we have it up there as MT Connect Data Viewer or something. That like sounds that. right. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. And it, and that's a rolling twenty four hours, so it's not like it shuts off after you install it twenty four hours later. It's a it's a twenty four hour data buffer that it keeps. Right. Like and a it, snapshot in time. Yeah. So yep. the past twenty four hours, you're viewing that data. And and the way that I like that is because. Uh, a lot of times people are connecting these devices and equipment and they don't know what they want to do with it, mm-hmm. right? I can connect all this stuff and all this data comes in. What decisions do I make or what do I even care about, right? Because mm-hmm. these data streams could get pretty substantial pretty quickly. But what I like about the app that Casey's talking about is at least it gives them direction and all of that was free, right? Yeah, you didn't co- talk about any cost yet. So to take the data, to connect it, and view the data for the 24 rolling hours has all been free. It didn't cost you anything yet. That's right. Right? So from there, now you can maybe get a little more granular with what you want and how you want to use it. Right? So now I'm to a point where I've got the information coming from my equipment. I have an idea of what I want to see and how I want to pull it and for how long I want to gather information. That's really the next step that I think people are starting to get to. (coughs) So, you know, you get the free stuff, at least you get connected and you're starting to see the information. Now let's take the next step. Now let's look at some, uh, some potentially paid solutions, right? Some, uh, some deeper learning algorithms that come into play in the background or, customized views, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. everybody's going to want to see different things, but at least we're helping you get there for free up until that point. Right. And that's that's where the real conversation piece of it starts. Once, once somebody has uh, had the initial experience of connecting their machines and realize that it isn't rocket science uh, and maybe used, say, a free application over a period of time, then, the, then they have a basis, uh, you know, s- some context when they come to you or they come to me, um, and we can talk to them about it. Exactly. Right. So backing up to the Connect Plan part of it, um, something that I get involved with a lot, especially in the aerospace world, any kind of ITAR compliant uh, type work, we're always asked about the cloud. Um, is this data that is out on the cloud? No. Okay. We are we are on an on premises solution. Okay. So. Explain that a little bit. Help me understand what that means. It means that you have a server within your factory or wherever you choose to put it that's on the same VLAN as the machines are, and there is no internet connection required to make, so to my, make this system work. My IP is secure at that point. So yeah, I come up with a correct. process. I come up with information that is very important to me and, and the way I run my manufacturing facility. Well, I keep that internal? As far as being secure, that's really on you. So it's really you're controlling it. You know what I mean? So if you keep it on your intranet, as Casey is talking about, on your server system, that's that's your data that's <clears throat> yours to control. It's not going out to the cloud in Japan or mm-hmm. even at our place in Charlotte. You know, so that's at least in your control, yeah. in your IT group's control. Okay. You talked a little bit about apps. Tell me a little bit about the app store. How do apps get developed? How do they get out there? Why don't you start off with this one, Casey? Because okay. he was he was around when guy. all of this started happening. Yeah, so that, exciting uh, times at Okuma. 2014 IMTS when we introduced the app store. I think it was. Uh, so yeah, the this is this is a concept that originated in the U.S., not in, from the parent company in Japan. And the idea is that we have a a common place to host applications that people have written, and those people are people at Okuma, people inside of our distribution network, and uh, people working for our partners, uh, and it, actually in some cases customers. So there's a web space to host those applications, and they're free to download, and you can use up. Obviously, there's nothing up there that's not useful, but... Uh, also, they, they can be used as kind of a, an inspiration for the things that you can do with the control. A lot of times people will download an application and come back to us with suggestions. You know, I, I'd like to modify this application to do X, Y, Z, where it does not right now. 
and it gets people thinking about what you can do with an open control that has an open API. So when they come back to you with uh, all those ideas and thoughts, it's not always you that has to do that, Casey, right? Yeah, that's you, correct. That's, that's the open no way architture. Oh, no, come on, man. We <laughs> said at the beginning you're the, the guy that does it all. Yeah, no. <laughs> the one-man show. Yeah. So from the power of the control itself, to me, that's one of the things that makes it so strong, so powerful, is the fact that I can do what's important to me. So if I come up with an idea and what's going to make my life easier in my shop, how do I go about creating an app? So um, we actually have a group of people that kind of help you make that transition, or at least can direct you to the people that can make an app. Mm -hmm. That group is called the Think Developers Group, and that group originated just because we have this open architecture-based control. Are these all Okuma people? No, nope. So they are uh, some Okuma software engineers. Casey over here is one of those guys. We've got uh, a team of distributors that all have some software-savvy engineers that can write applications. A lot of our partners, more and more, I think every every year are becoming software developers to have more technologies showcased on the control. So we've got Okuma, our distributors, our partners. The the last uh, group, which I think is the, the biggest benefit to all this, is actually our customers. Mm -hmm. They have the power, they have the capability to create their own custom solutions. That I see as a huge benefit to what you get when you purchase one of our products. So you get this open platform that if you've got the talent, if you've got the people that can learn how to program in .NET programming, you actually have the power to make a custom application and install it on the machine. So what's needed from Akuma? If I'm going to, I just bought a, a new machine, it's mm -hmm. got a new P300 uh, MA control on it, I want to develop my app. Right. I've got guys that can do .NET programming. Cool. What do I have to do from Akuma to be able to communicate to that? Sure. So you're going to use our API, which stands for Application Program Interface. And that's really the library that allows you to connect what the machine sees, so like the NC side of the control, to the Windows side, the side that you interact with, the screens, all those settings. So when I say something on the Windows side, I touch that touch screen. Uh, you know, a button on that touch screen that sends that message through this API through that layer to the NC side, telling the machine to do something or give me this piece of information. So that's your conduit there. That's your layer in between. So we give you that API with every machine. You know, that's that's free. We can just send you that. And I talked about the Think Developers Group. That's how we teach you how to use it. So. Uh, Casey, you can back me up on this, but a lot of uh, our partners and vendors probably use Visual Basic. I know I do to program that, but you can do anything you want for yeah. the most part, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, VB.NET and C Sharp are by far the most common programming languages that I've seen used with our API, but also Java, C++. Uh, you know, if you a lot of places have developers who like to stick to one language or the other. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, wait to answer your your question. What do you need? Um, you you really don't need anything after we send you the API. I think you just need to know how to use it. Okay. Do I buy those APIs? No. It's, nope. Yeah. The, they're include the API set is included on the machine. Technically speaking, you could go gather the files yourself and use them in your development environment. But we do have an online hosting of an SDK. It's on uh, GitHub, so we can supply the URL for that later. Okay, now a little bit ago you just touched on something. You talked about the Windows side of the control. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I know the answer from working at Akuma all these years, but I get asked this a lot in the field. Is Windows what's running my machine tool? <laughs> it does need Windows to run. It is fully integrated with Windows. So, uh, yeah, Windows does need to be running to actually run the machine tool. But um, uh, I don't know, Casey, so, if you have any other comments on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the processes that are displaying data for the user are running on the Windows side. There's a real-time operating system that's running the processes that are actually operating the machine, per se, uh, causing the axes to move and so forth. Mm -hmm. So those two are obviously closely tied together. Brad's right. You do have to have Windows operating in order to run the machine because you, 
your operator has to be able to see what's going on. But there is a real-time OS that's actually responsible for the direct interface to the hardware. That's the Volante yep, side of it. So correct, Volante yeah. is the OS that's actually driving the Akuma side of the machine tool, not Windows per se. So right. I don't have Bill Gates controlling my servo motors, right? No, you don't. I hope not. We'll <laughs> Um, what about embedded windows? That's something I've been, uh, that, that it's common in the industry. We hear people talk about, oh, this, this control is whatever, and it's running in Windows embedded. Right. Is ours embedded, or is it a full-blown? Uh, ours is the full-blown professional version of Windows, which is why we can do the things that we're talking about with the API. If you are running another version of the Windows operating system, um, uh, a lot of access to that is going to be usually denied by either the builder or the windows side of that so that's kind of locked down uh, with that respect i guess so because we're running the windows professional version of that it's really embedded or ingrained uh, into the nc side of things all right excellent any what's some neat software or technology i always talk about control from a software standpoint but what are some technologies that the osp controls got that we probably just don't talk enough about that's in there it's it's part of the control it comes standard on it and we just tend to not really bring it up or talk about it all that much our aes know it they use it they run it but we don't make it visible to a lot of people yeah there's there's a couple things uh, i can think of kind of off the top of my head um the first one I would say would be the Servo Navi software, and that kind of gets into why we've designed and built machines the way we do and how we can control through our motion control system all of our, our servos. Okay, so Servo Navi allows us to automatically tune our servo systems based on the weight that's you know inside the machine. So if you're on a lathe, it's going to run a cycle. I'm going to do this manually at the control. I'm going to tell the control, use servo navi weight setting. In a lathe, it's going to rotate the chuck clockwise one time and then counterclockwise another time. When it does that, it's going to pick up the weight of whatever's on the chuck. So the all the work holding, the uh, stock material, it's going to take all that weight and then automatically tune my servo system for that spindle to that exact weight, meaning that my axe and decks have now changed from whatever they were as default values. So by changing those axe and decks, I'm reducing, hopefully, my cycle time for processing that part. And it's going to work in a similar fashion on the machining centers. So this is kind of a nice feature because it's on a lot of our lathe products and a lot of our machining center products. It's going to be the same thing. So if I drop a part uh, onto a fixture on a table and I, again, go to the control and operate servo navi as a manual function, it's going to uh, jog my linear axis forward and back or my rotaries. It's going to rotate my uh, table or my trunnion and then pick up exactly what is on the table. It's gonna tune my servos to that weight. And I didn't even have to guess. It is exactly tuned based on the weight of what's on the table. Again, changing the axe and decks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool because I can just go up to the machine and do that manually. So if I've got a big heavy part, I put it on there, it could actually soften my axe and decks, or as I'm doing hog out work and I'm removing 80% of that material, I don't have to run the entire part that way. I can fire that in the in the part program, have it rerun that servo <laughs> navi, and adjust back and speed everything back up or tighten up the uh, ACK index. You're accordingly. exactly right, Wade. It's just a G code that you can command in the program as well. So that's the second part of that. I said you can do it manually, but to your point exactly, I can do it automatically too. I could just put that G code at the beginning of the program. It's going to do everything that I just told you at the beginning. And then to your comment maybe halfway through, three quarters of the way through that program, after you've machined maybe a couple hundred pounds of material, I need to run that again. I need my ax index to change, to speed up, hopefully, hmm. from Optim the reduction of, of weight. Optimize the work that you're doing. You're exactly right. Yep. All right. Very good. Well, as we're starting to uh, 
run down to our time limit here. So I want to thank you guys for joining me in the studio here today. And as always, all of our listeners, if you guys have thoughts, questions, uh, technologies that you want to talk about, shoot us a line, let us know. We'll be glad to look into it. Yeah.